Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This is Minneapolis Moline Prototype Tractor number X231 Restoration Series episode uh, part 44, episode 44, whatever you want to call it, it's the 44th installment. And work on replacing the damaged and broken 2-3 shift fork continues. Uh, if you remember from the last episode, I turned out the collar. There's going to uh, basically be a, a duplication of this part of the old fork right here. That collar is going to need to be welded and positioned onto the new 2-3 shift fork blank accurately. So in this video, well, we're going to start out by making some sort of fixture modeled from the old damaged fork that I can use to not only locate the new blank, but also locate, clamp, and weld the new collar onto the new blank. So I've got some steel that I'm thinking of using, quarter inch thick angle. And I've got some quarter inch thick by four inch wide flat steel uh, plate. I think I can get something out of these two uh, pieces of steel right here. Let's just see what I can come up with. So after some cutting and grinding, I came up with these three pieces of steel. Uh, I'm pretty confident that they are going to make up the entire fixture and be all that I'm going to need. I started off by uh, cutting a six inch long piece of that quarter inch thick by four inch wide flat steel. And then I cut these two pieces of quarter inch thick by two and a half inch angle. And you can see this one piece has a shorter leg on the one side. So we'll start with that. What that short leg is gonna do is go underneath the fork and provide some support. And then the taller leg of it will align down the one side and help to locate it. Then the other piece of angle goes on just like that so between the two of those they should pretty well cage that shift fork in there and uh, once I get the lower section of the new blank contoured it should also hold the new blank right where I want it to be so now that I've got that much done next step now is to weld these three pieces together make them one So this is where we're at. The welding was pretty straightforward. It basically just involved tacking these two angles to the base plate. And I'm also happy with how the two, three fork fits. It's located pretty well inside that. Um, it really doesn't move around, doesn't rattle. So it's being held pretty accurately. So happy with that. Next step now is to drill a 5 8 hole through the base plate right down at the bottom of the uh, bore that goes all the way through the collar and the old fork. What that hole in the base plate is going to allow me to do is to place the new blank with the new collar in here and run a bolt through all of those pieces to not only locate them but also to hold them together when I do the welding. But I'm going to have to be a little bit careful as to how I mark that out because, um, as you guys probably remember, this 2-3 fork is a little bit bent. so. I think you can see the collars kind of pointing off in that direction a little bit. So I'm really going to have to take my time and uh, be sure about the placement of this 5 8 hole here so I don't end up with a fixture that's just as tweaked as the old fork. So I got the 5 8 hole drilled all the way through. Let's just test this 2-3 uh, fork in there. So far everything is lining up. I like that. I can take this 5 8 bolt now and run it through. And this unthreaded shouldered portion here is a good tight fit through both pieces. Secure them with the nut. And this should give me a means of accurately locating and clamping the uh, pieces together when I go to weld the collar onto the new 2-3 shift fork blank. It should keep everything aligned and properly positions, positioned Sorry, so I can get that weld bead run all the way around there. 
So now that I have the welding fixture finished, I need to take the new 2-3 shift fork blank and finish off the bottom end of it so that it will fit in there. I left everything a little bit long and a little bit wide uh, to start with. So in order to make that look like this, I need to build another tool. Now the first thing I'm going to need to do on the new blank is to cut out this semicircular portion that actually engages with the 2-3 uh, sliding gear. And to do that, I'm going to use this bimetallic hole saw. This is 2 and 3 8 outside diameter, and luckily it seems to fit the curvature of the old 2-3 fork just perfectly. So, with a lot of patience and a lot of oil, that is my current plan of attack. I'm going to run into a little bit of a problem though, considering my piece of 5 16 steel was not long enough to be able to have this end be completely underneath the hole saw. So it's going to be a bit of an interrupted cut, meaning the hole saw is going to be drifting off the end of that piece a bit, and hole saws do not like to cut that way. Um, thinking I'm going to end up tacking a little piece of scrap on the end of that as a sacrificial piece just so that I can have full engagement all the way around with the hole saw, but we're going to cross that bridge when we get there. We're not really worried about that. In the meantime, I'm going to have to build some sort of a drill guide to help assist this hole saw not only through the blank, but also to get it positioned properly on the blank. So I have some more pieces of metal that I cut, another piece of that four inch wide quarter inch plate. We have a couple of, I think two and a half inch wide by quarter inch flats, and one more piece of the four inch wide quarter inch thick plate. And you can see I've already taken the hole saw and bored through that. This is the beginning of the drill guide right here. One detail I should mention right away about the plate that I've already bored the hole through is that the edge of this plate will align with this flat crease mark that was put into the back of the original 2-3 fork when they initially bent it so that when you take the fork and slide it down so that the edge of the plate locks into that flat crease mark, depth-wise the section of the fork that has been cut away in that uh, um, semicircular pattern is perfectly lined up with the hole that I've put in the plate. So that's one thing I was sure to do because that gives me some sort of a depth stop with my new 2-3 blank which was bent on the exact same uh, locations as the original one. So to get on with the assembly of this, uh, I have the old 2-3 fork aligned and clamped to the plate with the hole in it. Both radiuses are matching and I have the two flats clamped along each side of it to act as a guide to further locate it. I have verified the alignment with the hole saw, so everything is all happy right there. So what I, what I need to do next is uh, take the welder and just tack these two uh, side plates to the base plate. We'll make this one piece. got the welding done I recheck the fit of the 2-3 fork in there to make sure nothing is moved and everything still lines up and it all looks good so the final step in completing this fixture is going to be drilling some holes in order to bolt this top plate onto the rest of it now this top plate is going to be like a clamping piece and since the shift fork material is 5 16 of an inch thick and I've made the rest of these pieces out of quarter inch uh, that makes the shift fork the highest piece and it should allow me to apply full clamping load from this top plate onto the fork which should pretty well hold that in position. So I'm just going to mark out I think four holes in this, one in each corner, probably do about a 3 8 hole in each one, get them all drilled. And here is the finished product, four 3 8 diameter holes with 3 8 diameter bolts. I did not oversize the holes at all. I wanted the bolts to be a rather tight fit so they also act kind of as alignment dowels and I'm fairly happy with it. It should do a very good job of clamping that new 2-3 shift fork blank in here and keeping it located as well as acting as a drill guide to get that saw started in and get this hole popped in the proper position. Take these bolts out of here real quick take that out. You can now see how the new blank will go in there. This plate will clamp it in place and you can see the material that then has to be removed and that's guaranteed to be 
in the proper location. It should be um, an almost exact carbon copy of the original 234. So the plan moving forward from here, I now have this fixture which will enable me to remove the necessary amount of material from the bottom of the new 2-3 shift fork blank and have it in the proper position. Uh, once I get the bottom of this new blank contoured just the same as the old one is, I can take the new blank, put it into this fixture. Uh, this fixture will allow me to locate the 5 8 diameter hole at the top that is needed for the shift rail to pass through. Once I have that hole in place, I can take this collar and bolt everything together with this 5 8 bolt here and complete the weld that is going to join those two pieces together. At that point, all I have left to do is to finish out the upper contoured portion here and we will have a new 2-3 shift fork. I know this has been a lot of talking and probably a lot of boring work, but they say prior planning prevents poor performance. I'm not sure what prior fabricating does, but we'll just say that what little bit I have on the bench right there, just in those two fixtures, has taken me just about two weeks of what precious little spare time I do have. Uh, this time of year, as I've said before, guys, is very, very busy for me. So at best, I can get maybe an hour one evening after work, and it might be two to three days, so I can get another hour and a half to peck away at it. But little by little, we're getting on top of it, we're getting it done. Um, and I know making fixtures and tools and things like this isn't really glamorous and nothing's really going together, but it's all part of the process and it all has to be done. So um, as always guys, thanks for watching. And I do uh, appreciate your continued patience with this project. Believe me, I would like to be out here a lot more than I am able to this time of year, uh, doing a lot more videos and getting a lot more done, but there's just never enough hours in the day while the grass is growing in Minnesota. <laughs> you know, you just there just gets to be so many things to do outside and with the fields and the other work and everything. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope to see you back again.